So a little over a week ago, I posted this video here, which talked about what it takes to make $100,000 a year as an artist. If you missed it, definitely check it out. But the main idea is the need for multiple streams of income. The other point I brought up in that video was how important it is to actually design for a certain niche. There are a lot of comments on that video and then people reaching out through social media asking me, how do I decide what niche to create for? How do I do my niche research? And that is the topic of today's video. I actually covered this topic a couple years ago in a podcast episode. And even though it's been a couple of years, all of that information is still relevant and current, so I'm using the audio in today's video. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm not a fan of time lapses in tutorials, but today is not a tutorial video. So instead of just talking to the camera, I'm gonna play this audio from the podcast and throw up some time lapses of my artwork from Procreate that you can watch and learn how important niches are to make money with your art. So keep watching. Niche, niche, how do you pronounce this word? Me personally, I say niche, but I know there's a lot of people that pronounce it differently and no matter how you choose to say it, it is super important to understand what a niche is and how it relates to successfully selling your artwork online. So starting out, let's just talk about the definition. How does Webster's define niche? It is denoting or relating to products, services, or interests that appeal to a small specialized section of the population. So the more research that you do into online selling, you're gonna see this word come up a lot. And I'm here to tell you, it's not a buzzword. It is super necessary to use niches, to use niche research to sell your artwork. And it's super important to understand this. And I think it's one thing that struggling artists really do not grasp. And I can see it online when it does kind of pop up. A lot of artists, they're so wrapped up in the ego of being an artist. And they really think that just because their name's attached to something, that's what's going to lead to sales. And sometimes that is the case. But a lot of times I see artists putting kind of more passion and interest behind growing just those Facebook followers or Instagram followers. And they think that that's going to turn into people buying their stuff just because they think they're a cool artist. Instead of designing for a niche and designing with a niche in mind, they just want to draw stuff out of their head. That's cool. That looks neat. And that's all it's going to take to make sales. And granted, they're going to make some sales if they decide to make a t-shirt or a print of their work. Sure. Some of those followers are going to convert into sales, but I'm telling you, that's not the case. A lot of the times you're not going to convert all of those followers into sales. Only a small percentage is probably going to lead to any kind of income coming in. And you're really missing a large portion of the population by attaching your name, by strictly worrying about providing cool artwork that you come up with out of your head instead of designing for the niche. So me personally, as I design and I create artwork, I want the niche to sell my work rather than my name. I've talked a lot about on my YouTube channel before about selling your artwork and about different platforms that I use, different streams of income that I use and uh, have coming in. And a lot of people have gone and searched and said, okay, well, I went to your website and how come there's no store on your website? You don't have like a huge selection of products. How are you doing these kind of numbers? How are you bringing in this kind of money when I can't even find any of your stuff online? I want to buy some of it, but I can't find it. I want to research what you're doing. I want to see your products so I can get some ideas. And that's honestly because I don't usually put stuff under my name because I'm not trying to sell stuff because of my name. I'm not trying to use my platform to sell it. I've got a smaller platform, even though it's larger than some people's, it's still kind of small in the grand scheme of things. And I really design, like I said, for the niche, I want the niche to sell the work. So when people are looking up for a specific gift or a specific niche or interest that they have, that's how they're finding my work. They're going to find it that way rather than by looking up my name that they don't know. So that's really the target audience that I'm going for. So even though niche research and identifying niches is important, the thing that we first need to talk about and understand is actually what a niche is. And I know that we already defined it. And that's the problem is a lot of artists know or think they know what a niche is. They look up the definition, but they don't really understand what that means. So going back to where we started, let's talk about that definition again. And there's two words that are super, super important in the definition of niche. And that is small 
and specialized. So that is the key. Those two words together is really what we're looking at. Uh, so case in point, I think it was on either a YouTube comment or an Instagram comment, a DM. I got a comment from somebody that watched one of my YouTube videos and said, okay, this is something that I just, I guess I didn't understand before, but now that I've looked into it, I really understand what you're talking about. And my niche, I, I draw anime and I've got that, you know, manga, Japanese animation style. So my niche is anime. So how do I go about targeting? I mean, I guess I would like start tagging stuff on Instagram anime. And even though this person said, I understand what a niche is, obviously they didn't because anime is not a niche. That is huge. Uh, anime is what I would call a large market. So let's kind of talk about markets and niches and how they relate. So here's going to be some specific examples coming up. A large market, let's say, is pet owners. So there are a ton of pet owners. Just think about the millions of pet owners out there. So you've got, you know, cat owners, dog owners, reptiles, hamsters. I mean, there's so much pet owners. If anybody came and said, well, my niche is pet owners, it would be laughable because that is not a niche. You're missing those two keywords, small and specialized. So the idea of designing for a niche is you want to get your stuff seen. So yeah, a small specialized market, it's gonna be tinier, but the chances of being seen are better since it is smaller, since there's not as much competition there, since it's more targeted. And a lot of times these smaller markets are more passionate. Uh, so like I said, large market would be pet owners. So let's take a step down. And I know from here, some people would say, okay, well, pet owners is too big. So my niche is dog owners. And once again, that is absolutely massive. Dog owners is such a huge, huge group that that's not a niche. Once again, this is a market, even though the pet owners, I would say is a large market. This is what I would identify personally as a general market. So even though it is underneath, you know, the larger pet owners market is still a really large market. It's not too small and specialized, which are those two keywords that we're going for. So let's take a step down from there. Dog owners still keeping with that. What you want to do is start to identify where the passion comes from, where people's interests lie. And of course, you know, people that have dogs that are dog owners love their dogs. They'll tell you that they've got dogs, but what do they talk about more than anything? And that's going to be the breed of the dog. So going from pet owners to dog owners, the niche market would be the specific breed. So me personally, I just put down here St. Bernard owners because we used to have a St. Bernard. Absolutely loved our saint so much. And we were super passionate about being saint owners. So if we bought, you know, like a, a t-shirt or wanted, you know, a print for our hallway, you know, of a saint um, or you know, of something about our dog. It's not going to say dog on it. It's, it's not going to say, Oh, we love our pet. It's not going to say we love our dog. It's going to say something about a St. Bernard. So that's the idea behind the niche research is really kind of laser focusing on that small specialized niche. Uh, so the other thing that you can do too is combining two general markets into a niche would work. So instead of going all the way down to St. Bernard, like I said, we could use two general markets. So let's see, thinking about once again, dog owners, let's say dog owners who are also wine drinkers. So combining two generals together, you could create a niche from that. Uh, so that's another possibility. And then you can also even drop even more laser focused and combine two actual niches. So once again, the wine drinkers, let's say people that like Pinot Grigio. So you've got Pinot drinkers and dog owners, uh, poodle owners. So poodle owners, who drink Pinot Grigio. That's super, super specific. Granted, there's not, you know, going to be a ton of things that line up for that for people searching, but that's the thing. If there is somebody searching and you're the only result that comes up, yours is going to stand out. Or if there's only a few results, you're going to stand out. And that's why that small and specialized keywords are so important to this. So once again, with niches, where do you find niches? They're important, but where can I find them? They're all around. All you have to do is look. Honestly, niches are going to be hobbies. They're going to be interests. They're going to be jobs. They're going to be lifestyles. Anywhere you look, you can probably find a niche just by thinking about it. So look at yourself, uh, personal 
you know, interest is a big thing that you can pull from. So any sports that you like, hobbies, things that you collect, also friends and family are a super, super good resource. And the key here is you really want to understand that niche and you want to be able to go to people that know about it. So if you're picking a niche that is not specific to you personally, it's great to have that family or friends that you can go to so you can learn more about the niche. Because the key is here, you want to know, you know, specific terms, details that are super, super specific specific to that niche. Uh, so going back to the dog owners part and niching down with that to St. Bernard's, one thing that all St. Bernard owners know is saints are super crazy slobber beasts. So slobber is one thing that goes hand in hand with a St. Bernard. So having that, knowing that you could tie that into a design and design around that. And it's going to make you connect with that audience. One thing that you really want to think about is when somebody buys something that is related to a niche, they really want to feel like they're buying from somebody that knows them, that is either maybe super into the same thing that they are or really understand it. And you don't want to come across as somebody that's just pandering for a quick buck. And that's kind of easy to do if you don't really research it. So if it's, you know, like a job, let's say like a welding job, if you've got a friend who's a welder, you know, finding out specific tools that they use, if there's any, you know, funny inside jokes that go around the welding community, stuff like that, you can really relate to that customer. That's how you want to do it. So identifying and learning about the niche, that's only part of the process. You've also got to understand if there's a look or an aesthetic that's common within that niche. So once again, a uh, specific example, I had an artist read out, reach out to me, I think it was on Instagram, and super, super talented, identified the niche. Uh, they were going for the vegan niche. This artist was a vegan. So once again, knowing your niche is super important. They targeted that, said, okay, I'm a vegan. I, I know the terms, I know how to relate, but they said, I'm just not getting the sales. So what do I do? And just looking at some of the designs, personally, I knew right off the bat what the problem was. And what you really need to do and to think about is you really need to make sure that if there is that certain aesthetic or that common just look or style that goes within that niche, you really want to stick to it. Uh, so like with the vegan niche, just looking at different products that are available and seeing sales ranks on stuff and, you know, cer certain pins on Pinterest and, and things like that, really like vegan clothing and any artwork really has kind of this classic simplicity to it, almost like an organic, no pun intended look to it sometimes like kind of falling on the retro inspired graphic design side of things and this artist like i said super dope super awesome artwork but went for this really like cartoon graffiti style like street art style which is totally against all of the aesthetics you see with the the vegan line of uh, products that are offered and the ones that sell so that's why you know their artwork wasn't selling is because it was not even though he was vegan it was not really making you know a splash with that community it wasn't making the connection because it went against that overall aesthetic that kind of people go to and gravitate towards uh, with being a vegan so that's really important if you want to stand out, do it in a way that doesn't go against and comes at the cost of overlooking the taste of that target audience that you're going for. So the key here really focus on that small specialized part of that definition. That's really, really what you want to do. Another example I've talked about on my YouTube channel before, one of the streams of income uh, that I talked about was doing coloring books. And I've seen some people do coloring books and they spend a lot of time and have offered these coloring books of just these cute little cartoon animal coloring activity books for children. And that's basically the niche that they're going for, which once again is not a niche, just doing cute cartoon activity books for children, not a niche. Uh, really here, there's no artistic name tied to it to where they don't have a huge Instagram following. People aren't buying it because, oh, look, so-and-so that is the super celebrity in the art world just did a coloring book. That's not happening. And they're not niching down and not going for, you know, a specific target audience. Uh, so really what they're doing is putting up something that there's not a lot of difference between that and what you can find at the dollar store. And of course, if you're selling stuff like this online, you are looking to make a profit. So you're going to be selling, you know, coloring books for five, six, seven, eight dollars maybe at times. And you really have to provide more value to the customer than giving them something that they could find at the local dollar store. So going back to the gentleman that I talked to you about the, the vegan niche, uh, this was something I used as an example for him. And I said, let's say that you're doing coloring books and 
you decide, I want to do this cute animal coloring book. Once again, you can go down to the dollar store and buy a cute animal coloring book. You want to give the customer something that they can't find somewhere else that they're looking for specifically that's so niche specific. It's almost like this person made this for me. So instead of doing, you know, an animal coloring book, how about you do a ferret coloring book targeted towards ferret owners? Now, you know, the ferret owner community, not massive, but there's enough people there that you can make sales off of it. So doing, you know, a coloring book or activity book that's got, you know, the pages to color, but then also has like a food tracker and you can do a vet visit log in there. Something that's going to build value, something that's going to be different and unique that you can't go down to the dollar store and get. Like if I walk down right now, I know I'm not going to find a ferret owner coloring book, activity book at the dollar store. This is going to be something that's really going to speak specifically to people that either have ferrets or they are buying a gift for another ferret owner. So that's really, really important is to, like I said, really go small, specialized and specific with your niche research. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And hopefully this answered some of the questions that you guys had about niches and niche research. If you liked today's video, if you got some value out of it too, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. And if you are a returning subscriber, let me know down in the comments what you think about the format of today's video. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Time lapse, no time lapse as I talk about stuff, just trying out new things and want to get some feedback from the community. Also, let me know if you want more videos about making money with your art. I've got a ton more podcast kind of in the back pocket that I can use in this style or I can film new content as well so let me know that's it for today's video as for me I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell so until next time keep creating